Hey everybody, this is Mike from Virtual PM. Just coming to you guys with another PM tip of the week. Today I wanna to talk about virtual meeting icebreakers and why they're needed. So a lot of you guys probably already know about icebreakers, but basically what an icebreaker is, is an activity, event, or game that is designed to break down the social barriers and make other people feel comfortable and help facilitate that interaction between you and the client or you and the other attendees of the meeting. Are virtual icebreakers needed? Uh, yes, definitely they are needed. Um, even though a lot of us have gone virtual, and we've been doing these virtual meetings for a while and they've kind of become the norm. Uh, many people are still really uncomfortable actually doing uh, meetings not in person. Uh, many of the people are unfamiliar with and don't know how to use the technology on a regular basis to have the meetings. And so that kind of helps kind of keep them in their own little bubble and not want to communicate and talk with you. So um, many people are not very comfortable being on camera either. They're used to just being in person and they feel like they're kind of like in a spotlight when they're on camera. People don't like to, um, people really do like to be in the same room to be able to get your nonverbal cues and that helps kind of uh, make, make them feel comfortable in a meeting. And so that's why I think icebreakers are definitely worth doing um, when you first start your meetings to kind of get everybody feeling more comfortable and a little bit more open to talk. So why do we need these icebreakers? We've already kind of talked about a couple of them, but it sets people at ease. Uh, gets people to open up a little bit more, uh, helps facilitate your discussion, uh, especially when it's kind of a dry subject. It's nice to kind of get them feeling a little bit more at ease uh, before you get into the meat and potatoes of the meeting. Also, it breaks down those initial barriers, and uh, it's a great way to boost spirits and kind of make the meeting feel a little bit lighthearted and fun, kind of a de-stressor during, during these times. What are some of the types of icebreakers? Well, there's many, many different types, but in this one, I've kind of broken it out into three different uh, major categories. Uh, but there are basically a limitless amount of icebreakers that you could probably think of, but I've broken it down into questions, activities, and games. So with the questions, you're just basically starting off your meeting with a simple question to kind of get, and you basically do around the room kind of using that question. Usually I like to start off answering the question myself so people feel a bit more comfortable um, answering answering question once it becomes their turn. Um, so this is just a couple of examples. You can do, uh, what are you grateful for today? Well, I'm grateful for um, having my family healthy. Uh, what's one of your, what's one of the hobbies that you like to do? Well, I like to work out and, and uh, box and do some boxing. Um, little known facts about yourself. You know, I used to be in the Navy, you know, and then you can go around the room that usually helps to open up people up and kind of gets them off of their defensiveness here and during their meetings. Um, some of the activities that you could probably do is um, tell a humorous story. Um, that's another activity that I really like to do. Um, doesn't really put anybody on the spot, but it helps kind of break the ice, um, kind of a humorous story of maybe what your dog did, your cat did, your kid did during the week. Um, something that they can probably easily relate to is definitely something good. Um, you can do a show and tell, show a picture, you know, or an office oddity. And then the person can kind of explain why, why they have it. So it might, might be kind of fun. A uh, virtual water cooler, that's a little bit more involved, but you can set up a a, um, a shared screen with different cups of coffee and everybody can pick their own little cup of coffee and put it on their little square. And then you just kind of let the conversations organically happen. Um, games, you could do Jeopardy. You could do uh, tell two truths and one lie, maybe a trivia game or maybe a quick question game. Um, like I said, there's no limit to what these icebreakers can be, but they really do help you uh, kind of break down those initial barriers. Uh, what are my favorite icebreakers? Like I've said, um, I like the quick questions, probably the easiest. Um, that's the easiest and the fastest. Um, they're, they're easy. They're easy to think of. Uh, they don't take a lot of time in the meeting. Um, the attendees don't have to log into something or kind of join something to be able to maneuver around their app or around their computer. Like I said, a lot of these people are not used to being on computers every single part of the day. Um, and then it can be used for most situations and organizations. You know, a lot of people are aware of these. And so they're 
you know, when it happens, it's not a, you know, like a real abrupt change. It's kind of a nice change of pace. Um, activities and games are also really good too, but I would suggest maybe using those in later meetings, not that first initial meeting, because sometimes these activities and games take a lot of time. And unless you're in an organization that just has ample amount of time to have a very long meeting, uh, that might not be something that you'd want to try to start off first things with. Um, but later you can use those as, you know, kind of a change of pace, nice team building and stress releasing activities. Um, these can be used in the right meeting or situation, right? There could be some organizations that are very stringent and very rigid, and you don't necessarily want to rock the boat with certain activities or games. And finally, the next items um, I'd like to talk about is uh, icebreakers to probably avoid. Um, with the questions, you definitely don't want to ask anything political. Or, or religious in nature that kind of kind of put people uh, their barriers up and not want to answer. Um, also, try to stay away from certain news topics um, that could also kind of put people at it or not really want them to open up and kind of put them on the, on the defensive. Um, or any questions for that matter that may make them feel a little bit uncomfortable ask, answering in a larger group. Um, games and activities, like I said before, those I would not lead with. I would definitely take the temperature of the group that you have. And then if you feel that those are good to go, then you can start incorporating those. Um, but it really depends on the group. Um, you definitely want to stay away from elaborate games um, and activities because people just don't have enough time to actually enjoy them, right? Um, and then, like I've said before, depending on your organization, or your organizational's culture, uh, these might not be seen in, in a favorable in a favorable light. You know these activities and games. So, not to say that you can't do them, you can not start working those in smaller games as you go along. But you definitely need to be able to take the temperature of your organization and the people that are in the room because you definitely don't want them to um, see all of this in a negative light. But like I said, this is a great way to kind of build those relationships with your virtual clients and customers it allows people to kind of have a little bit of fun during the day and really is just kind of a good way to get people to open up to answer your questions um, in my particular field i'm an it project manager so i have to do a lot of requirements gathering and a lot of just dry talk about project due dates and milestones that usually helps to kind of get people to feel that they're part of the team and kind of get them involved so they're not just zoning out so thank you very much. If you guys like my content, please like and subscribe and please pass me along to anybody else who might uh, enjoy my content. Everybody have a good rest of the day.